Hi guys, welcome to another Filmmaking Tips tutorial. Today I'll be talking about um, day for night shots. A day for night shot is a shot where in the edit or using camera techniques, a scene or a shot is filmed during daylight hours, but then edited in a way or manipulated using the camera um, to look like it was filmed during the night. Why might this be necessary? Well, if you don't have a camera such as a Sony a7S which has extreme low light capabilities then it may not be actually possible to film during the night. I'm going to go over some tips for you to use when it comes to shooting day for night shots. You want to ideally film um, your day for night shot not during hours where it's really bright outside because then that's creating more work for you and it's harder to sell it as a nighttime shot. Um, so you want to film usually early morning hours where the sun is kind of low or um, in the evening, um, dusk time, so it's pretty dull. Alternately, you could film on a really cloudy day when it's really quite um, dull anyway. But what you want to, uh, um, want to avoid ideally is harsh shadows from the sun on a really sunny day. Um, so in terms of camera settings, as you'll be shooting when it's dark outside, it doesn't matter what camera you're using, it's the same on all cameras. You'll want to shoot to a, a high enough ISO or gain, um, but not too high that it's too grainy. So on this camera, which is actually similar to a lot of Canon cameras, the grain starts to kick in around 1000 ISO. Anything above that's um, fairly unacceptable. Um, for shutter speed, you want your shutter speed to be 50th of a second, um, never anything lower. Um, and for your aperture, you want that wide open. So remember, if it's a wide open aperture, more light's coming in and that means lo the lower f-stop number. So for this particular lens, it's f4.0. So this camera is all set and ready for a, a low light shoot. What we're now going to delve into is the editing process. So once we've captured our footage in reasonably low light hours, not when it's actually dark, but when it's kind of dusk, um, how we're going to go about processing those images to really sell it so it looks like it's a nighttime shot. Okay, so now we're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'm going to go over to my day for nights bin and I've got inside here a selection of shots that I could use um, for a day to night. So I'm going to go for this one first of all, which was shot around midday. But as you can see, there is really heavy cloud cover. And although we've got obviously some parts of the image are darker and some are more exposed to the sun, um, when converted to a day for night shot, any highlights can be played off as um, moonlight. So I won't worry too much about that. Um, I'm just going to set an in point and out point. So I'll do it and I'm going to click and drag the video into my timeline like that. And now we'll see it appear in the program monitor. I'm just going to full screen that. You see I just need to reduce the scale because it's a 4K clip on a HD timeline. So if I go 50% like that. Now the first problem we have is everything is too bright. So I'm going to go to our window and our Lumetri color tab and bring that up and now here we can start adjusting the colors of the clip. So with the clips selected, I'm just going to bring the highlights down and the shadows a little, just so everything's a bit darker, just as our starting point. But the key to a day for night shot is two things. It's the color and the contrast. So if I reduce the contrast, I'm going to make the image look as flat or as, or as gray as possible. So if I pull the whites down, we can remove that clipping from the highlights like that. And it's looking really awful and boring and gray at the moment. But um, what we're trying to do is remove as much of that contrast as possible. So it all looks like there's no light on it at all. It's all in the shade. What we can then work on is the color. So during daytime, everything's kind of um, got more of a tungsten feel to it and then at, at night time the, t the color temperature drops so everything goes blue. You could do this in camera, you could shoot with a white balance 
that's a very cold white balance like 2000 um, or you can shoot in a normal white balance and um, do it in post like we are so I'm going to shift everything towards the blue end of the spectrum so now I've got a low low contrast and a blue image and I'm just going to play with the shadows already we can see if I hide this effect that's what we started with and that's what we're working with now so as you can see it's not perfect because if it was really nighttime these these clouds wouldn't be quite so vid visible they'd be a lot darker and I'm going to select the le select the clip hold down command and C and then command and V to duplicate it and then I'm going to drag this duplicate over the top so we have two exactly the same under the opacity in the effects controls panel which you can go to windows and then effects controls I'm going to press on the pen tool so before I start though I'm just going to zoom out a bit just so we can um, have some free space around the edges so just with a single click I'm making these points and I'm drawing a line so I'm just going to be really rough here but you can be as precise as you like and I'm just going to go around the area of the image that's a bit too bright so now we've cut this out and if I was to hide the bottom layer we can see that on the top layer we've created a mask around the sky so what we can do now is we can affect the color on this top layer and it's just going to affect the area that we've cut out so we can make it a lot darker that's good but the problem we have is obviously there's a very sharp line and that completely ruins the effect so under our mask we're going to go down to mask feather you can drag this out and you can read it we're going to increase our mask feather and feather it by quite a lot but now it's shrunk the mask so I'm going to go down to mask expansion and just expand it and we're just going to play around with these it's just a case of finding the right settings that work for your shot. Every single shot um, requires different settings. So there's no point copying my settings exactly as I, as I go through this. Because um, every shot has its own unique challenges. Okay, so once we're happy with our settings, we want to go back onto the mask and we're going to ensure that as the clip plays through our mask stays in the right place if I press on the stopwatch here toggle animation that's going to record the position of the mask during this point in time so if I go back to the beginning of the clip now I'm now going to adjust the position of the mask so I'm now going to scrub to the end of the clip select all of these at once, click and drag, drag these over and then I work halfway between each keyframe and just check that one's close enough and I'm just going to move this one out here. So that's what we're left with. Okay, so taking a look at another clip, we've got this drone shot flying through the desert and first problem that I can see is that the sky is very bright over here and over here it's actually blue um, and there's no cloud cover whatsoever. However, thankfully, because of the mountains, all of the ground is completely in shade and there's no hard shadows. There's just soft shadows underneath the trees, which is ideal. Um, so for a clip like this, if, if I set my in and out points using I and O on the keyboard or these markers here, I'm now going to drag and drop this onto the timeline. And the first thing I'm going to do is scale it down so it fits my screen. 
the first thing I'm going to do is actually open this clip up in After Effects. So right clicking the clip, I'm going to go to Replace with After Effects Composition because for this, I'm going to have to do an entire sky replacement. Okay, so now we're in After Effects, it will ask us to save this project. So I'm just going to call it Sky Replacement. So our clip's going to load up, and the first thing we're going to do is remove this sky. So we're going to use a tool called the Roto Brush. It's very simple to use. We're just going to double click, first of all, on our, on our footage and that's gonna bring us into the layer panel up here, you can see. Once we're inside this layer panel, we're gonna go over to the rotor brush and we're gonna use it to paint across the sky. As you can see, whilst I'm painting, you can see this purple line appears. If I press this button down here, we can toggle um, a mask preview. So it's going to show us everything that's in red isn't selected, which is perfect, that's how we want it because we're selecting the sky. Um, however, one thing I'm going to choose to do for this example is I think that once I've made all the changes, replace the sky for a nighttime um, image, I think this mountain might give us some problems because the lighting on it is very different to the rest of the scene. So I'm actually, if I increase this opacity of the mask again, I'm actually gonna select this mountain as well as the sky. So just clicking and dragging as I go, and After Effects does the rest, just like magic. Down here, you can see we've made a, a blue dot just by using the rotor brush, and we can click and drag and extend this part all throughout the rest of the clip. And what that does is After Effects uses the paint, the painting that we've just done on this frame and takes that data and then analyzes it going forward through the rest of the clip. It's now going to start processing these frames and it's going to automatically paint the sky for us um, and this mountain for the other frames. So we don't have to do it for every frame, um, which is amazing. But it takes a little time, so we're just going to leave After Effects to do its thing, analyze the clip and um, run its course. Okay, now that's finished analyzing this portion. I'm just going to jump ahead into the composition and you can see that what we're left with is actually the sky and not the um, ground. Now that's not an accident, that's, that's how it's supposed to be because the sky is the easiest thing to select, right, because it's completely clear. So all we have to do is go down to the clip, effect, roto brush and refine edge and then invert foreground background and enable that turn that on okay so now go down to roto brush matte and we're going to feather that um i'll do it by eye so maybe 12 maybe a bit more or something like that um and then reduce chatter is going to get a, get rid of the um the jagged edges around the edge and we're now going to shift the um edge in a bit to fully remove that white line so this is what we're left with so that's a much smoother edge to our um, background plate now our next step is to find an image on google of a night sky that we want to put behind our image i'm going to be um, a bit crazy and just use a picture of the northern lights just because i can um, um, so i'm just going to save that image it's important to make sure it's a high resolution image, whatever image you choose. Um, I guess if anything, choosing the Northern Lights will make it even harder to color match. So um, yeah, let's see how this goes. So I'm going to go to my finder, find this Northern Lights image, drag it into my project window and then drag and drop it below my original footage. So it appears behind my footage in the composition window. So now I just need to adjust the scale, scale it up by hitting S on the keyboard, click and drag those numbers up. And yeah, that looks about right. I think I'm now gonna adjust the position, P on the keyboard with the layer selected to bring up the position. And um, yeah, let's hide those icy mountains in the background. 
I think, yeah, I think somewhere around there looks looks about right. Obviously, the, there's no aurora in the desert, but I don't know. Maybe this this scene could be from another planet or something. Now, what's really important to do is to match the colours um, of the sky and and the original footage. Always for a day to night, the main thing, um, as we've gone over previously, is shifting that white balance to a more blue tone. So I'm going to go to my effects and presets panel, um, type in Lumetri color, and I'm going to drag and drop that onto the footage. And that will appear in my effects controls panel now. And under basic correction, we can affect the temperature and cool that down and make everything more blue, which will give it more of that nighttime feel. And we'll also bring the contrast down and the shadows just to darken them up a little bit. That's looking much better, much more like it's shot at night time. Now, looking at this green in the sky, let's reflect that in the background plate. And we're gonna do that by using the tint. Underneath the temp color temperature, which is the white balance, there's always a tint option. And on the left, it's always green. On the right, it's a purpley color. So let's shift it to the left to bring out some green in the ground so there we go that's looking like it um, you know belongs under that sky if that's at all possible with the desert under the northern lights um, okay so let's do the same for the sky plate drag and drop lumetri color onto the sky under the basic correction adjust the highlights shadows i'm just experimenting here it's every day tonight has its different challenges okay i think we're done here so let's play this back and see what we've got 